Hi, I'm Josh Silberg. I am a producer on the Microworld series. My name is Alana Kloss and I oversee the Annex Biodiversity Lab on Quadra Island where all of the microvideography for the series Microworlds took place. Hi, I'm Bennett Whitnell. I'm one of the videographers on the Microworld series. And I just wanted to give another shout out to Grant Caligari, another one of our videographers who's currently on parental leave. Thanks for joining our Q&A. Yeah, we've gotten a lot of questions about how we filmed Microworlds, so we thought we'd answer a few of the most common questions. So a couple of things that we used to film this series is A, a microscope. We connected our camera to the top. We used an attachment that allowed us to put DSLRs onto the top of the microscope. We use a couple of different kinds of microscopes to film. So uh, behind us is a compound microscope, which gets really close to things like diatoms and other small structures. And we also used a dissecting scope uh, to get a little bit of the larger creatures on, on camera. Another very common tool we used was this probe lens, um, where we would put plankton in a PVC tube and then dive our probe lens through it uh, to get kind of those flying through the plankton shots. Uh, and then we also use tanks. So tanks of various sizes that we put plankton in. There's a reason why plankton isn't on film more often because it is a pain to film. Sure is, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> There's a few reasons why why plankton is a pain. You gotta go collect it first from the ocean. You gotta bring it back, keep it alive, keep it cold. Most of the things we filmed were kind of between, oh, the size of a grapefruit down to, yeah, uh, tiny things that you can barely see, poppy seed size, let's say, and smaller. Yeah, another challenge that we came across was how much the plankton move. A lot of the little ones, it's really hard to keep focus on when they're zipping around in circles and they won't quite stop, so. Uh, right when you get them in focus is when they decide to shoot out of your screen. A lot of screaming, a lot of swearing. One of my favorites was the squat lobster. Um, these are little crustaceans and they live the first part of their life in the plankton and then they settle down to the bottom. And we had one that was pretty close to ready to settle and um, over and over again got sent to fall down in the water column and land. And the landing shot, Grant had it set up to be in focus and it would always land slightly to the side and then not facing the right direction. So to get him landing on the rocks and kind of facing the camera um, was both satisfying and frustrating at the same time. I was looking at this brooding polychaete, so a, a little worm which was carrying a bundle of eggs. And all of a sudden the eggs all started wriggling and you could start to see these little tiny worms hatching out of the eggs. And soon my petri dish was filled with thousands and thousands of little baby wriggling worms. And one of my favorite things to film was the sea angel. It was just so majestic and kind of beautiful looking as it swam slowly through the water column. Um, it's one of the more pretty and charismatic plankton I think that we filmed. The underwater world is pretty alien and then once you get to that micro level it's it's a whole another experience really. Yeah, so weird and wonderful. Thank you so much for all your questions. We really love showing you how these series come together. We're currently on Calvert Island filming season two of Microworlds. Um, we're super excited to show you that. But in the meantime, go check out Field Notes, uh, one of our new series, all about the secret lives of wildlife uh, through trail cameras. Not far from our own backyards here in coastal British Columbia, countless wild stories are unfolding. Moments videographer Grant Caligari and I would never normally get to see with our own eyes. But with the help of some trail cameras set up in a nearby forest, we've managed to witness some amazing wildlife behavior. Watch with us as the subtle and intimate moments of these stories unfold over the course of a year in season one of Field Notes.